How you doing folks? This is uh, John Daly. I want to talk a little bit today on how to find your your very own shop process. And this thing has to be personal. You can't run off somebody else's shop process. It has to be kind of really personal to you. Uh, I know I work on my shot all the time and try to make it better and better each each time I shoot or each year it goes by. So what I like to start out with and I'm going to use my shot process as an example, but I'm going to go over some things before, you know, I show it to you from, I'll show you from different angles the best I can and explain. But uh, first thing I would work on is the your grip. You know, I try to keep it here on the fatty part. And it has to be comfortable. Everything that you do has got to be comfortable. If it's not comfortable, then you're not going to do as well with it. Uh, you just have to find what's comfortable for you. Each person's different. I know for me, holding the bow this way and the uh, my hand up here closer to the shelf works a lot better for me. Uh, and that's the way I go with it. Uh, and just if it's not comfortable then you'll have to f figure out a different way where it's comfortable and i just try to let it rest there on that fatty part on the fatty part because when i draw i don't have to really do a whole lot it's windy right now but i don't really have to do a whole lot it's just resting again up against my whole arm and bone structure um, and even we'll move on to the how you address the string i address it with a, a deep hook and i gotta turn around here you can see in the first digits right here i'll just let it set in there and i may just roll my fingers forward a little bit so it ain't coming out once it gets pressure until you you know let go um, that deep hook it kind of gives me control if i some people like doing it on their fingertips so if you have a little slip uh, it could pop out prematurely. Uh, that's just my own opinion. If you're used to doing that and it's doing fine for you, you know that's great. But uh, I use a I use a deep hook, and that way when I get back, you know I don't have to sit here and try to hang on to it with my fingers and have tension in my in my draw arm because everything should be barely relaxed, you know, from your bow arm where the bow is resting in your hand. Uh, all the way back to your draw. So you should be drawing with your back uh, muscle, which is the rhomboid mus muscle next to your spine. It's, that one should be in tension and not so much in your arms, shoulders. I mean, if you're trying to, you know, uh, if you're not fully aligned, you know, you still got your elbow sticking out, that tends to tighten up your shoulder and bicep. So you're really trying to hold it back with just, your shoulder and bicep instead of drawing with your back if you got shoulder problems that'll uh you'll really start to feel it drawing uh i guess the wrong way you could say or drawn in a better way to say it's drawn in a way that you're hurting yourself uh by using your back you're using a lot less of your shoulder and bicep because i kind of show you from behind here i mean i can't really it's kind of cool out here, so I definitely ain't going Because when I draw, I see where my elbow is, it's just going to come straight back. So I'm not really got a whole lot of tension on my shoulders or my bicep. Everything is in my back. So when I get ready to shoot, I'll expand a little bit, and then the shot goes right off. So uh, you might want to, if you got shoulder problems, have to go down and, and bow weight, uh, you'll really learn in the lower bow weights on how to use your back tension so back tension it saves your arms and shoulders and you're not going to get as tired as quick uh anchor points you know i use about a about a three three anchor points so that way my head's resting in the same spot every time uh, not just you know having one in the corner of my mouth i try to use my index finger to find my eye tooth there's one, I rest my blade kind of against my jaw and my thumb up against the back of my jaw. So I'm pretty locked in and I'll just kind of, you know, add tension and my elbow will automatically come back with the back tension. So with that, you know, by having three anchor points, your head's liable not to move. As long as you keep your head in the same position and it's, 
you'll shoot barely consistent, but uh, if you only got one anchor point, that's fine. If you're doing fine with it, you know, that's up to you. Uh, I'm just kind of sharing with you kind of the way I do it, and you'll and most of you will just have to find your own little little uh, shot process that's going to work for you by me breaking this down is kind of giving you smaller parts to work on instead of trying to work on the whole picture. Uh, when I do draw, I'm doing a rotational draw, so which is engaging my back. Uh, with that, it gets everything, gets my elbow in alignment. You can over overdraw, but once you get your anchor points down and get a consistent anchor, you'll draw back to the anchor and that elbow will be there at the same point and Basically, the main goal is is to line up with the arrow, is being your body in alignment with that arrow. So Byron Ferguson, he comes up, you know, with a saying, "Become the arrow." And basically, the arrow is barely straight uh, that we can see, and we're trying to hit, go straight from point A is where we're standing to point B to the center of the target, you know, in consistency. Uh, so, you know. You'll have to, again, experiment it with the whole time. Uh, I may hold a, about the second, second and a half. Sometimes I'll mess around with holding a little bit longer and see what the arrow does as I hold longer. Uh, that's, again, you know, your whole time. I hold about a second, second and a half. Uh, that's about seems to be a good point for me, uh, especially hunting, because uh, once I draw back, I mean, I'm I'm ready to go and uh and even on you know just shoots I'll just draw back get to my anchor and I'm letting go basically within my within my time limit that I found to, on the whole time that works for me uh, each person might be different some people might have to you know hold two seconds so you just have to play with it after a little while and having a good clean release is going to help us a soft release instead of a violent. What I mean by a violent is somebody coming way back with their arm and they just really ripping the string. I found myself beforehand, or a lot of times I do do that and I have to kind of stop and evaluate that shot and just kind of go back and go through my stuff a lot slower. So uh, basically with that, you know, it's mental focus. Uh, archery is a, a mental focus game uh, for you to hit your target you know if you're an aimer you know you're going to have to get to aiming then you've got to separate aiming from the shot and which sometimes can be difficult because you're so much trying to hold the tip of the arrow there for an instinctive archer it's just looking at it and following through because uh, your follow through is very important I got videos breaking down your breaking down form I just ain't covered back tension but if you would, you know, get, take it, take this stuff in little bitty parts and then, and break it down and see and work on each thing. And eventually you'll, uh, you know, have a really good repeatable shot sequence. And that's a real big key. I mean, I can give you all the practice, practice tips, uh, you know, how to become accurate. But if your shot sequence isn't repeatable, a lot of that stuff is, you know, you're just going to be doing it, doing it. Well, it ain't working, but, you know, you got to really go back to, is your shot, shot sequence repeatable? I mean, for an instinctive archer like myself, is everything has to be the same and repeatable to where I can make good shots. I mean, you can't get away from the shot process. Whether you're an aimer or an instinctive shooter, it's all the same. Uh, form is, you know, if you got good, consistent form, results in good consistent shooting now going into hunting uh you know i worry more about waist up form than i do feet if i'm in a i got a tree stand uh the platform's not real wide so i can only get my feet so wide which i shoot kind of slightly open but i worry more about my waist up alignment than i do waist down because in a lot of situations you're going to find up in a tree stand you're just not going to get perfect situations like that but upper body alignment is going to help with that so uh that's why i shoot a lot of 
shoot mainly a lot of 3D. Uh, that kind of help you figure that stuff out, but that's all practice. So uh, I hope this helps. Just break down your stuff in little small parts, look at it, and eventually you'll find ways that's easiest for you. And I'll take a few shots and I will let you see. I'll get it from a couple different angles. Uh, I guess I don't know how far I am. I guess I'm about 18, 19, maybe 20 yards. Uh, kind of going for a spray painted circle there I did. So the way I'm starting now, I'm already looking at my target. Just to make sure I'm right there. Yeah. So I've already got my fingers on the bowstring the way I want them. And I'm just going to lift up. That simple. Uh, I'll shoot it again. At least I did hit the my little circle, even though my circle's huge, but I'm not really too concerned. I'll do it again. Same thing. That dropped a little bit. Now I'll see if I can get a a good side view and you can see about where the way I'm anchoring. Oh yeah. You can kind of see all that. So I'm just gonna raise up. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much my shot sequence. And uh, when I raise, when I start raising a lot, I start drawing. Uh, the draw is kind of a little different. I'll kind of show you what I did. I dropped one really low, but it's dead center. They're pretty much all in alignment. And I dropped one out. That was my fault. Uh, I guess I dropped my bow arm or whatnot but these are hitting pretty much the same everything is in alignment so that's the key to having a good shot sequence is you'll get a lot more center line shot than a sporadic spray uh, your bow arm is real important also in that that uh archery is not tennis i mean I, I mean i do it a lot of times and i do work on my bow arm quite a bit more so i can get it steady uh Sometimes when you shoot, it's kind of, you know, your bow arm's moving around, your arrows are spraying, you know, I would slow down, just isolate all those things, work on them a little, you know, one at a time and not at a, at a big bunch. So that way you get, go along a lot more further, a little bit quicker, instead of trying to work on the whole thing, you're trying to figure out where your shot's not being consistent. So. I hope this helps and just break it down in small parts and find what's comfortable, what fits you, and you'll find yourself getting a lot more accurate in some of the practices that I have, videos I've posted, you know, to get like the pinpoint accuracy is it relies on a good repeatable shot sequence to be able to, you know, to get pinpoint accuracy. That's, that's where it starts from, the basic fundamentals is your form and shot process being consistent. So I hope this helps and I hope y'all have a great day and God bless.